We know that writing is a key component in communication and people write for many different reasons. For example, you may write a letter to your friend, send a greeting card, or write an email to your relative. These are forms of personal communication. We also write letters, emails, memos and meeting notices to people in our workplace such as our juniors, supervisors and colleagues or to people in other departments. These are forms of business communication which is the focus of this lesson. Good communication involves knowing the four W's. The four W's are what, to communicate, when, to communicate, who, to communicate with, and how to communicate. Let us understand the four W's with an example. Imagine that you want to apply for a job that has been advertised in the newspaper. You will first plan what form of communication you will use. Write a letter. You already know when you will write. When we want a job. Who will you write to? To the Human Resources Department. How will you write? Write very formally. Express thoughts and knowledge clearly. Use appropriate words. There are a number of ways to communicate with our fellow employees in the work environment. For example, we could call for a meeting, send an email, or a letter. Business communication refers to all the possible types of communication styles that could be used in the work environment. In some situations, we may be required to write a report, proposal or make a presentation. Such tasks are also a part of business communication. We will now look at two definitions of business communication that clearly bring out all the possible aspects. In his book, Professional Selling, Robert Anderson has defined communication 
as an interchange of thoughts, opinions, or information by speech, writing, or signs. In the work of George Vardaman called Effective Communication of Ideas, the term effective communication has been defined as the purposive interchange resulting in workable understanding and agreement between the sender and the receiver of a message. Let us try to understand what the two definitions are telling us. The first one says that communication is an exchange. It can be an exchange of thought, opinion or information. So how do you exchange thoughts, opinions or information? You do it by speaking, writing or by signs. The second definition tells us what effective communication is. It says that it is a purposive interchange. This means that the exchange of thoughts, opinions or information is done for a purpose. Further, it says that this purposive interchange should result in a workable understanding. What does that mean? Well, simply put, this means that the receiver should understand the message that the sender sends so that the purpose of communication is fulfilled. Communication is effective only when the idea being sent and received is similar. That way, the purpose of the effort to communicate has been fulfilled. In other words, these definitions tell us that communication is always a two-way process and it involves two or more individuals. If someone tells you something but you do not hear it or even see it, then can you say that communication is taking place? Certainly not, because the receiver is not listening or seeing. Therefore, we can say that there is no two-way process happening here. Hammering ideas into someone's head without waiting to see if the other person is interested in you or even listening to you is definitely not what we mean by communication. The purpose of this business communication course 
is to prepare you for communicating effectively in your job. Your needs will vary depending on the organization. For example, if you are employed in a government enterprise, you will most likely be required to know how to communicate in a formal manner with senior officers, bureaucrats, and sometimes also with the MLAs, MPs, and political leaders. Whereas if you are working for an IT firm, you will be dealing with your manager, the client, project teams, etc. Here you can be a little less formal because you are dealing with these people on a day-to-day -day basis. As a result, you will not need to start your letters as Respected Madam or Dear Mr. XYZ. The requirement here is for a very direct approach, which will clearly communicate the technical and business aspects of the project you are working on. So as you can see, what we communicate depends on the situation we are in and who we are communicating with. Importance of Business Communication In this part of our course, we will mainly learn about communication between the management and employees and also about communication between an organization and external entities. These could be the general public, other organizations or sometimes the government. These days we see that there are many advances in technology, rapid changes happening in the economy. The world is becoming a very competitive environment. To survive and be successful in such a changing environment, one has to be equipped with all the necessary skills. Communication is one such skill that is very essential in today's work environment. So what should a strong communicator be able to do? A strong communicator will be able to express his or her ideas clearly and ensure that the management understands them. For example, you might have some brilliant ideas about a project or you might want to point out mistakes in a proposal. But if you are not able to express these ideas clearly and if you lack the skill to tell other people about your ideas, then no one will recognize the value 
of your idea and ultimately you will feel disappointed. Let us now understand the key features of good communication. Good communication should have the three C's. These are clear, concise and crisp language that is easily understood. It should be presented in an objective and graphical format. It should be open to questions and feedback. It should also have good timing and be relevant to the audience. And finally, it should be systematic in approach. Communication that happens in a workplace can take many different forms. Like we said earlier, while sometimes you may be required to write a formal letter, at other times, since you are dealing with the same people every day, you can be a little less formal. Generally speaking, we can then classify the various forms of business communication as given in this figure. You can see all types of business communication can broadly be classified as formal, semi-formal, or informal. These can further be classified as only internal or internal and external. Let us first learn about formal communication. Formal communication is official communication. That is, it is related to office matters. For example, it can take the form of a cover letter that you write when applying for a job or the presentation that you make in your office. Notice that in formal communication you need to get straight to the point and be very businesslike. Also, formal communication is always done with an agenda in mind.
A very important thing to remember in formal communication is that you are responsible for whatever you write. You cannot deny what you have written. Therefore, formal communication is a very serious matter. Let us look at a part of a formal letter that an employee of a detergent company wrote to ABC Limited informing them about the delay in the shipment of the consignment. Notice that the manager got straight to the point and has communicated what he wanted to say in a very short, business-like manner. The agenda here was to tell the dealer that the consignment will be delayed. Since this is a formal letter, the dealer will keep a record of this. And that is what we mean when we say the communication is recorded and accountability can be established. So, is formal communication always written in nature? No, formal communication can also be oral. Let us look at some examples. Meetings interviews and negotiations are all types of formal communication which are oral in nature. However, the minutes of the meeting are always recorded and negotiators also record their conversations as proof of what was decided. So we can see that even though formal communication is not always written in nature, it always has an agenda and a record. We will look at semi-formal communication next. This form of communication is used for office notes, memos, etc. that are circulated every day. Since we are dealing with people in the office every day, we don't need to be very formal even though we are talking about serious official matters. We don't need to give greetings or proper closings. Also, semi-formal communication is generally brief.
For example, Ravi wants to remind his colleague Suresh that he will be on leave on Monday, the 24th of August. He decides to write Suresh a note. 